I think there's a special relationship between the rock and the people and the security. In the formation days of, of Flin Flon, it was, there was a large European influence. It was uh, pretty troubled over in Europe. The Second World, or the First World War had just ended and there was a large influx of, of people that came seeking gold from Hungary and Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Germany, France, it, Scotland, um, England, Ireland, every, every nation. Uh, they came to make a fortune and they stayed to build a community. And the Hudson Bay Mining and Smelting Company has been an extremely stable company. And I think as long as the people see the rock, and, and they see that stack, there, there's a feeling of security. Welcome to Underground. Currently we're standing on the 390 foot level of Hudson Bay Mining and Smelting's Flim Flon North Main Mine. Behind me we have one of the chutes uh, located on one of the oldest levels of our mines, the 390 foot level. This level was basically driven to accommodate ore movement from the bottom of our open pit mine in the late 20s and produced up until the 60s. Mining has changed in the last 70 years. Nowadays our drifts are considerably larger than this. We don't have the timber and the amount of ore that we can move in one day is substantially increased. So the tunnel or what we call a drift that we're currently standing in was uh, developed back in those days to the dimensions of eight feet high and between nine and 10 feet high. Currently our drifts at our newer mines, say like Trout Lake or Namu, could be anywhere from 15 to 20 feet high by 17 to 24 feet wide. Depends upon the equipment that will be running in the operation. This mine was actually accessed through a shaft or a glorified elevator, as some people like to call it. What we see currently on the wall, the green and the white, is an action of the water coming through the ore body. As it passes through the ore, it acts as a leaching agent and picks up some of the copper. And as it accesses to the air, or gets exposed to the air, it drops and deposits the copper on the wall and gives us the green color, or what we call copper sulfite. The reason there's so much splashing in water that we are currently seeing and experiencing is because we are in one of the oldest levels of our North Main mine and we no longer work in this area so the water just basically seeps in and we just let it run where it happens to end up. Our newer mines are a lot drier and a lot better lit. Our operations in this area have been running since the mid-twenties when we started with the open pit. Up until the end of 1988 we had produced roughly 70 million tons of ore with 13 mines having come and gone. Currently we have three mines in operation and our ore potential for the future is looking exceptionally well with our Trout Lake operation. So we will probably be here for a little while longer. To be a prospector, uh, a fellow has to first of all be in real good health. And uh, from a personality viewpoint, he has to be very, very optimistic, uh, optimistic as hell because uh, the, uh, there's very few prospectors that, that are on wages. They're just living off the land or trapping. Uh, the, the, first, the first find was found in 1915, which is a Mandy mine just down the lake here. And uh, my dad came up in uh, the early 1920s after the First World War. And each summer we used to, my dad used to have us come up, my brother and I come up in the summertime and we, we'd put more pits in at Snow Lake and uh, Blast and more pits out at Beaver Lake. And uh, that went on through the 30s. We used to, uh, we used to more or less live off the land, you know, and uh, we'd take salt and, and uh, pepper and sugar and the uh, essentials into the bush, but we'd, uh, we'd shoot a moose and uh, smoke them, hang it up in the tree, and uh, when we wanted to stake, we'd bring it down and, and uh, catch fish and uh, rabbits. In those days, it was, uh, it was mostly uh, panning and uh, ac actually, uh, actually chipping samples off of uh, quartz veins and uh, sending them out for assay. But uh, panning was a, was a very essential 
tool in those days, and uh, that's, the way, uh, that's the way my dad found the Snow Lake deposit in the Iraqi mine. Well, once you start prospecting, you'll always be a prospector. I think a lot of people come because we're resource-based, and one of our greatest resources, in addition to the minerals, is, is uh, fishing. And, and we have a lot of visitors. A lot of visitors, too, come for uh, strictly the scenic, rugged beauty of the North. It's uh, sort of last of the tame wilderness. People get a sense of, of being in the wilderness, and yet there's, there's security, there's nothing to fear. Locking doors is, is something that uh, people in Flin Flon really aren't accustomed to. Flin Flon is a city built on rock. It's an easy place to find and a hard place to leave. For more information about Manitoba's North of 53 region and Flin Flon, you can call toll free 1-800-665 0040, extension 325.